In this video, I'm going to take you with me on what was probably one of the coolest adventures I have ever gone on. Now, I've been all over my home country, South Africa, as you can see by all the Google Maps markers here, but prior to this trip, none of these markers over here in the northwest side of the country existed. This adventure takes us to the Richtersveld, South Africa's only mountain desert, bordering what is thought to be the oldest desert in the world and one of the driest, the Namib Desert. So what's the allure of a desert? Well, running right through the barren landscape is the Orange River, South Africa's biggest river and the border between the two countries of South Africa and Namibia. The Orange River is fed by the mountains of the Drakensberg and the Haifelt, filling a number of huge dams before cutting through the dry interior and eventually ending up in the Atlantic Ocean. The beauty of the Orange River is that it gives us a unique opportunity to explore the beautiful Richtersveld without having to hike and get cooked in the sun, and also gives us the chance to straddle the border between two countries for a few days, something that not many people get to do. But of course we have to get there first, and our trip starts with a long journey on the road. Despite being a pretty miserable 14 hours, I actually really enjoyed the drive because we got to pass through some insanely beautiful and diverse landscapes, everything from rainforest to mountains to desert. We had to stop at the Namibian border post to get our passport stamped before heading to the base camp and on our way got our first taste of the Richtersveld. I don't believe the moon landing was faked, but if I wanted to fake the moon landing, I would have certainly taken my photos right here. So we've just arrived at the camp after a ridiculously long day of driving. We were up at 2 o'clock in the morning, driving from Nasna, drove straight across the whole country. And it's now probably 6 p.m. We've arrived at the camp. We've met all the other guys that we're meeting up with to, to paddle with. And we just kind of settling down, having a nice cold drink. And in a moment, we'll get our briefing about you know, what the plan is for the next few days, the different routes, uh, where we're going to camp, where we sleep tonight, all of that stuff probably try to get some early sleep so we can hit it hard tomorrow, should be fun. Our base camp was situated on the South African side, near a farming community, and our trip was to take us almost 50 kilometers down river, ending at Osenkur in Namibia at the end of the fourth day. In this video we're going to cover the first two days, with stops in between at spontaneous camp spots along the way. It's going to be awesome. Right, so we've just had our briefing and time to set up at the camp. Everyone has their stuff out, so we're only going to pitch our tents later when it starts getting cool. Otherwise the heat will be trapped inside the tents and it's going to be miserable. But let me show you where we are. We are on the South African side and that, on the other side there, is Namibia. We're going to be on the border for, for four days, obviously crisscrossing from one side to another. So it should be fun, let's do it. To get another type of scorpion, Paravithus gladiatus. It's the black one with lots of hairs on it. That is super dangerous. Get very far away from it. Please tell me about it. Um, once again, don't try and pick it up or touch it. Uh, that is like medical issues. Well, guys, it's 5:30 a.m. at the camp on day one. Just got up. Sun hasn't gone up yet, but it's just starting to get light. It's end for today. We're going to be paddling in probably an hour and a half. We're just going to have some coffee quick and pack up our tents, and then we're going to get going. Really, really excited. It's going to be an adventure, but I'm trying to make sure that I haven't forgotten anything because there's no turning back once we start. We've got a big uh, dry bag where we can put all our, you know, sleeping uh, uh, tents and sleeping stuff and clothes. Um, I brought a second small dry bag for stuff to keep on the boat. Uh, I've got a water bottle that's flask as well to keep my water cool. And then we all get a nice big cooler box. So I filled my cooler box with lots of ice this morning and hopefully that can keep all my water uh, nice and cool for the rest of the trip. We had a short briefing and were given some advice on how to pack the rafts before getting on the water and starting our long journey off. 
We had absolutely gorgeous weather on day one, no wind to speak of, flat water and amazing views. The first section of day one saw us paddling out of the agricultural area and moving into the mountains of the Richtersfeld with steep cliffs on either side of us and wild, slow moving channels. The slow moving water meant that we didn't move very fast, but we enjoyed ourselves nonetheless and got to know each other along the way. We had a pretty cool group with guys from Australia, Canada, America, England and the Netherlands, so it was a melting pot of cultures for sure. Right, so the paddle has begun. Nicole and I have found ourselves at the front, not on purpose, but we're at the front, which is cool. Um, look at the scenery here, mountains all around us, absolutely gorgeous, and all the guys over there. So we're having a good time, I'm going to try not to drop the GoPro, and I'll keep you guys informed. We had a couple small rapids on day one, but mostly flat water, which meant one really good thing, swim breaks. Swimming breaks are much needed on this trip. Yeah. It's very hot and we're paddling a lot, I'm so coming. jumping in the water is a great thing to do. <laughs> the way he got up on that thing. <laughs> I'll never forget it. Hello, hello, hello. The heat was starting to get pretty unbearable towards midday but the weather changed all of a sudden as the clouds rolled in and we got a bit of respite from the sun. When you're going through the fast moving water you can't really just hop off and swim so we were pretty lucky that the afternoon cooled down a bit. Bad news. Bad news first, half of you have to go that side. What? Half of you have to go that side. Oh, okay. Queenies? Yes, that is right. Lunch and come. Can you miss? Alright, so it's now quarter past two in the afternoon. We've just arrived at our first night's camp spot. I think we probably did 15, between 15 and 20 k's today, um, because the total trip is about 60 to 80 kilometers apparently. So it's a long trip and I think we covered good ground today, but we've just settled down. It's overcast, which is, is nice because the heat isn't too bad right now. Um, but we're probably gonna just make some lunch right now and maybe just spend the afternoon relaxing, swimming, doing some bird watching. I see there's a Hammerkorp that's just landed here, which is a nice bird to, to watch. And just chill out and enjoy ourselves. I think yeah, the afternoon's gonna be very, very much just spending time together, camaraderie, having a few drinks together and just relaxing. So looking forward to it. Um, the, the guys are busy making lunch now and see how the afternoon goes. All right. Name three SA Sports Stadiums. Uh, the Madiba Stadium, the... Uh, no! You may have seen the Spartan Precision uh, bipods and tripods that I use on my other channel, but you haven't seen this yet. This is an awesome tent, and how it works is that you actually fit it on the Spartan Sentinel tripod. So, if you look over here, the support poles 
are actually the tripod legs for the Sentinel. A lot of space inside. And on the top here, you can see that's from the tripod. So that's what your rifle would go on. But it's an awesome setup. And it's super light. It's like half a kilogram. So obviously I'm using it here on a canoeing trip. But if you were to be hunting and climbing up mountains at the same time, like doing a sheep hunt up in the mountains or, or something like that, then you could actually pop this tent. It's 500 grams, half a kilogram, pop it in your backpack, use your tripod for hunting, and then set it up in the evening for... For, for camping out so look where my tent is beautiful spot right on the edge of the river so we're camping on the, the south african side but the namibian side is right across from us so i'm gonna wake up being in south africa but looking out on namibia which is really special really looking forward to that and looking forward to finally getting to use my awesome lightweight tent While the guards were preparing dinner, a few of us decided to take a bit of a walk into the mountains and just explore a little bit, which turned out to be one of the highlights of the day. I'll confess, we were actually looking for scorpions, but Luke's wife Rachel, who's actually a geologist, found some really cool rocks and gave us a rock lecture and we ended up all looking for rocks as the sun went down. We climbed up a hill and got an awesome panoramic view of the river curving through the earth in front of us. Day one ended with a dinner cooked over an open fire as all our meals would be of the next few days and after a long day I got an early night ready to hit it hard again the next morning. Right well it's morning of day two, we've just got up and I've just made myself some coffee which is a definite priority. Beautiful morning here, um, sky is looking pretty clear, so I think it's going to heat up quite a lot today. We had a, a nice sort of cool day by this place's standards yesterday, but uh, we want to get started early today to make some ground while it's still cool and uh, to just get on the river early well, before, before the wind picks up, because I know the wind can come directly towards us and that doesn't help our cause. But everyone's up, we're all doing our thing now, preparing for breakfast, packing tents away, putting all our stuff on the, on the rafts. And, and we're gonna get going. Let's do it. So we've just got on the water. Um, we're a bit later than we, we wanted to be. It's still early enough that we can uh, make some good ground. So perfect weather today. Uh, what I mean by perfect weather is very little wind, but it is gonna get very hot. So I think we should get going. Day two was probably my favorite day of the whole trip, to be honest. It was the longest day, if I remember correctly. I think we ended up covering about 20 kilometers, but we got a really good balance of fast and slow moving water, swim breaks, and beautiful views all around. We've done a few rapids already this morning which is great and it's probably only like 10 o'clock now. Um, it's fun to go over rapids obviously but also you get to cover a lot of ground quickly which means we get to see more. So it's really cool to be able to uh, experience a bit of everything. We've got some flat sections where it's very deep, the water's not flowing quickly, you can hop off and swim along the way like what I've just done now and then we get some more uh, rapid flowing sections where you got to knuckle down, make sure everything's tied down on the boat in case you capsize and, and just go for it. The rapids aren't crazy. I've, I've been in um, bigger rapids before, but um, you do have to stay focused and you do have to be very careful of rocks and stuff and um, yeah, keep your wits about you. So it's been awesome. 
It was so cool to see some diversity in the surroundings. We went past sections where absolutely nothing grew. It was just twisted rock structures and desert, which was beautiful in its own way. And we got to go through some really green sections where the river split up into many streams with islands in between, monkeys running around, and guys who had parked off to do some fly fishing. And as usual, regular swim stops were very necessary. So we've just stopped for a while, a little beach over here on the side of the river. As you can see, we've got some, some sand here and a nice calm section of the river. It's a lack of place to stop uh, with all the mountains over here. That's the Namibian side, that side on the, I believe it's the north, and the South African side here on the south. So we're still on South African soil. But yeah, nice to have a little break. Arms are a little bit sore. I think we've gone about eight or nine Ks, I think. So we've got a long way to go still, but it should be good. I mentioned earlier that the river split up and you can see here just what I mean. You could almost get lost here, but it was cool because some sections were quite technical. At some points we had to go single file through the reeds because the stream wasn't quite wide enough. Our last section of the day was a rapid called Klein Chambok. It wasn't crazy, but it was probably the biggest rapid we had gone through so far. An awesome way to finish off our paddle just before we reached camp. All right, so we've arrived at our camping spot for day two. Forget what I said earlier about it, it being pretty cool. It is now scorching hot, but thankfully we are camping right on the back of the river again. Nicole and I have just built a very crude shelter out of a tent uh, shade cloth, just to keep our shady without the tent getting heated up, so they they can flow through nicely. I think Luke and Rachel have gone to do some, some fishing in the rapids there but this is a beautiful spot, we're actually camping on the Namibian side tonight um, Look at the view here, absolutely beautiful Mountains all around us, river right by us and a bunch of rapids down there So, really really beautiful I think the agenda now is just to cool down for the afternoon and maybe swim a little bit, sit in the shade a bit and, and take, it, take it easy and get some rest because it was a long day and I think you've probably got another long day ahead of us tomorrow me there and hopefully you can hear me because it's very windy but we're starting to see uh, with the sun going down it's starting to get cooler so I've, I've emerged from my shady tree and maybe starting to walk around it's becoming quite pleasant some people are swimming some people are having a few drinks and preparing food so it's going to be an awesome evening I think uh, probably got a few more hours of sunlight maybe an hour and a half of, of light left uh, but that's plenty of time to get the cooking done uh, everyone get get themselves ready and get going it's been an absolutely awesome day i've thoroughly enjoyed um today's uh, paddling session it was quite strenuous at some points because the river kind of spread out and, and, and you know there was very little flow in some areas but other areas were a whole lot of fun you know rapids um knuckling down getting in there um it was absolutely awesome so in all in all a really good day i think they said we covered like 20 something k's today which is a lot um, yeah, yesterday was only I think, 13, so we did a bit more work today, but tomorrow, they said tomorrow is the most exciting day, so tomorrow we're going to be going rapid after rapid for a while, I think it's going to be a lot of fun, so I look forward to showing you that, but let's get down to the food, let's get some food in our stomachs and let's wrap up with day two. Our camp tonight just happened to be right at an old abandoned fluorite mine so some of the guys hiked up the mountain to check it out. I stayed at the camp and relaxed a little bit just soaking in the views around me. 
Again, dinner was cooked over the fire. They even made a chocolate cake on the fire. Don't ask me how, but it came out amazing. And we finished off the day in true African style with orange light reflecting off the orange river, mountains all around us and a fresh breeze blowing through our tents.